welcome back. My name's Jim Kaysen. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And we started a couple sessions ago by introducing it to let you know that we're going to be talking about how to be led by the Spirit. Now don't go, you say, oh, I've heard all about that. Well, don't do that <laughs> because you will hear things you've never heard before. Because the primary focus is going to be me sharing examples of my personal life where I've missed it, which uh, in this book of Spiritology, which I wrote, there was only several examples, and I did, had it in my heart now for quite a few weeks just to share my life and show how it works, the things of the Spirit. Now, I left off last session talking about how my drug supply was cut off. People thought I was going through, I was a full-blown alcoholic now before I came out of, by the time I came out of high school. So now, just at age 21, uh, my friend my, uh, who had joined the Navy and was working in pharmacy was bringing these drugs home. I didn't even know what they were. We just mixed them with our beer and whiskey. And um, then he was transferred to Hawaii. That's what we said in the last session. So unknown to me, my drug supply was cut off, but I didn't know I needed them. And here's where the, the, the world would have said I was going to a depression or a withdrawal. And then, of course... In the natural realm, that was so, but in the spiritual realm, there was a whole lot, a lot of other things going on which I was unaware of. I didn't, never read the Bible, didn't know God, didn't know about the devil or all these things in the spiritual dimension. And, uh, but I look back now and all these voices came to me. And now there's lots of voices out there in the, in the world and the and, and majority of them are not God. Well, this voice is, Grandpa died two years before this, and, my, and, and he was my favorite grandpa. He hated my dad, and I did too at that time. And, um, and so that was two years before. So I thought Grandpa was talking to me. See, I had no, I had no, you know, I never knew the Bible talked about you can't contact the dead. So I never tried to contact him or anything, but these voices came. And of course, they, they would say, the world is better off without you. In other words, kill yourself. Well, <laughs> nobody in the right man mind wants to die. And so I remember, now understand, I never read the Bible, but I would cast those thoughts down. Now, what does it say in 2 Corinthians and in chapter 10? And we get over here to, oh, come on, 2 Corinthians, you're not that far away. And we come right on down here to verse 3, 4, and 5. For we walk in the flesh. For though we walk, though we walk in the flesh, we being the human spirit, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And see, I was I would cast those thoughts down, and I never read the Bible. And here it is in the Bible. That's what you're supposed to do. Well, according to James, you know, chapter one, you know, temptations come like waves of the sea. They come in, they roll out, they come in, they roll out. And so the voices kept coming back. The world would be better off without you. And, uh, another, and, and so then I would get this uh, uh, thought in my mind, you know, of course, to, to kill myself and doing it by taking my brand new car four months off of the showroom and... Uh, you know, just go as fast as I can and hit this particular bridge abutment a quarter mile west of my hometown. Well, I kept throwing, the, casting these voices down. They kept coming back. And pretty soon, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And before long, I began to believe these voices. I began to believe that the world would be better off without me. But still, I was reaching out for help but nobody knew what to do with me because back in those years, there was no teaching on drugs, alcohol, and especially a young man 21 is definitely not an alcoholic. That's those real old men laying in the gutter in some big city someplace. And so then I would make, I remember uh, and when we'd get drunk, you know, in our drunken parties, I would say, oh, I've got this, I have this dream. Uh, you know, I'm driving down the highway and this bridge jumps out in front of my car. Well, nobody touched that with a 10-foot pole. They didn't, they didn't know how to handle that. 
So I decided that's exactly what I needed to do. See, faith comes by hearing. So you listen to the wrong voices long enough, you'll have faith in those voices. You live to God, if you listen to God's voice, his word, long enough, you'll believe God. <laughs> that's just how it works. Repetition. And so then I remember the night before I would do, I, I was a batch, uh, single at the time, and had a bachelor's apartment in the capital city, 100 miles from my hometown. And so I'm in my home, uh, just on the weekend, or I don't know how, but anyway, I'm in my hometown. I'm heading back home, which for me is back to the capital city, my, where I have my apartment. But I stopped at the farm to see my folks. And of course, dad wasn't there at that particular time. He must have went to town to get something. But mom was there, my mother. And then I said, uh, I said goodbye to her, you know, just, I was there just for a few minutes. And then I said to my mother, you know, when I drive down the highway, I have this dream, you know, this bridge, you know, getting out in front of my car. And she just kind of had that dazed look. She, did, she absolutely didn't know how to respond to that comment and didn't. And so, see, I'm reaching out for help. And, uh, you know, because inside, I don't want to die. Well, anyway, I had planned on Sunday morning. 11, at 11 o'clock, I decided that I would hit this particular bridge a quarter mile west of my hometown. And so that morning came. And of course, I had 100 miles to drive to get to the bridge. I did arrive a little bit early, so I circled, drove around a little bit because I got there, I think it was about 10 to 11, if I remember right. And by the time I circled and drove around, then I had to get back up on top of the hill. This is paved highway. And, and from the top of that hill, I have at least a half mile, at least a half mile, if not longer, downhill. And uh, so I get up there, and now it's 11.05, Sunday morning, February 9th, 1964. So I come off the bridge, uh, off the hill, rather, and pedal to the floor. And I think a lot of times, I don't know if how many different than anybody else, you wonder what people are thinking just before they die. Well, I remember putting the pedal to the floor. I saw the needle buried. I saw the bridge coming. And the last thing I remember was saying, as I turned the wheel, was, Grandpa, here I come. That's all I remember. And of course, I don't remember hitting the bridge. The car went into pieces. It ended up on the opposite side of the highway. And engine, uh, the highway patrol took pictures. I had them later. And engine and transmission were separated and it was a mess there was nothing to tow and so there were people of course coming out of town and in you know on the highway so there were they saw the car going through the air and of course they had to uh, the right half size of the right half or where the passenger seat was that whole side of the car was cut out gone but i uh, they had to so the car ended up the passenger, the driver's door laying down on the ground. And so they, they set it up to open the door to get me out, I guess. So I don't remember. And then, and then the, the little town of 1200 had a small hospital. But the doctor at that time was also an alcoholic. And uh, they had to get him out of bed on that Sunday morning. And of course, he's hung over from what I understand. I don't know. I don't remember any of this. But he's the one that sewed up my face, you know, there was a lot, the jaw was completely broken in three places, lots of other stuff. My eye, I guess, had to be put back. And so all of these scars and everything, he did. <laughs> it's a, you know, kind of hung over, I guess. Well, they gave me up for dead. So they called the family together. And uh, of course I was, uh, from what I understand, the hospital was full, so they had laid me in the hallway. And so they, they did not expect me to live through that Sunday night. Well, so here we are. I guess I need to cut this off right here and uh, pick it up in the next session. <laughs> Amen. So God bless you, and we'll see you in the next session. Amen.